Rub up your engines! All right, people are always asking me, should they get a hybrid or not get a hybrid? Well, in this new Toyota Venza, you don't have a choice. It's only sold as an all-wheel drive hybrid system. As you can see, this thing is averaging 39 miles a gallon. For a vehicle of this size and weight, to get that kind of gas mileage, it's relatively phenomenal. We'll look under the hood. Very dependable 2.5 liter engine. No turbo, just 2.5. And the hybrid system here to give it boost. Now this is a Venza, but it's the same as the RAV4. I've driven the RAV4, I liked them, so I imagine I like this one, I road tested. It. But you'll see these things are still pretty zippy and they can get phenomenal gas mileage, right? Now, everybody knows I'm not a fan of CVT transmissions, right? But this is Toyota's eCVT. It's a bit different. They've been making it for quite some time. Prius has all had them. They've pretty much perfected them over time. Because if you're gonna have a hybrid system like this, about the only way you can do it is putting on a CVT transmission because it can have different inputs to the same drivetrain. Where if you had a regular transmission, the only way you can do hybrid is a half-assed hybrid take Dodge, some of their trucks. They're mild hybrids, and they have this crazy Italian generator motor that's built into the engine. So the engine gets the boost through the same transmission. Okay, this is new and shiny. Got a timing chain, no timing belt. You don't even have to worry about that much maintenance on these things. And if you want all wheel drive, there it is. That's the only way they make them now. <laughs> you have to get an old version for a two wheel drive. They only make them in all wheel drive. They figure there's enough people that want them. That's how they're making them. I like the black trim and the black wheels with the white. It looks pretty good. And here's something interesting. Oh, the nightshade version. It's the only version that has the black trim like that. Say you don't like the sun, okay? There's the sun. Well, there's a magic button somewhere over here. There it is. Watch this. Magic button. Okay? Now what do you see? All you see is that little dot of a sun because this is opaque done electronically on the switch. Watch. Here we go. It's opaque. We'll get rid of opaque. Boom! There comes the sun. And it's bothering you. You get opaque for a little bit of brightness, and of course, if you can't stand any of it, you can just close the whole sunroof if you want. And here it comes, electronically closing itself. And you don't have anything at all. But perhaps this black interior is too dark for you? Well, then what you do is you open the sunroof. It is a double sunroof, so. And then, there you go. You got a nice orange sun. Maybe you can use it to look at Eclipse, I don't know. But it's all electronic here, because then when you push the button, like I said, now it's full sun if you want it bright. But, to some people, that's too bright, so we'll push the button again. And then it's not as bright. Now, this is a hybrid, but it's not a plug-in hybrid, so when you push EV, you can drive it. And if you drive like a turtle, for very short distances, say you want to sneak up on somebody, <laughs> you can do that. But as soon as you drive it normal, step on the gas, the gasoline motor it took in, because this is not a plug-in hybrid. This is a standard hybrid. Now, you take a RAV4 Prime plug-in. I did one of those a few months ago, and the guy told me he's been as far as 55 miles on electricity alone. He took it on a highway going 60, and it was still running on electricity until it got low. So if you want to try out part electric car, you'd want to get a plug-in. Me, I'd rather have one of these because they're a lot simpler, the battery's smaller, and unlike plug-in EVs and full EVs, the battery in this thing is safe. It's inside the car under here. If you got a full EV or a plug-in hybrid, all the batteries are on the bottom of the car. And if you live up north, or anywhere really, but especially up north where it's so salt on the road in the winters, right? The salt water will get in those batteries and it can destroy the battery, the wiring system. Canadian government had a big rhubarb with the plug-in RAV4s that they made them fix them because the salt water ate away the wiring. Those were plug-in hybrids. This isn't a plug-in hybrid. You don't plug it in. It just charges itself while the engine's running or when you're doing regenerative braking. So it's a much simpler system and it's got much less downsides than a full EV or even a plug-in hybrid ass. It's got puddle lights under the mirror so when you open the door you won't see it now because it's too bright. But at night it'll light up so you don't stand in a puddle when you get out. You can see it's got a very wide screen 
good definition. Look, now you're even wider. You can change the lines. Most people will just leave the lines like that. But if you really need wide vision, you can make them wider. Close, wide. Now it's pretty good if there's any kids walking around, you get a better view of what's going on. There's of course all the safety ones here. Traction control, you can turn off lane departure. Too lazy to open your trunk. There it goes! I've seen a lot of them don't do it. Let's see if it closes itself. You gotta hold it two seconds, and yes, look, it closes itself too. For the life of me, I could never figure out why they made ones that would open themselves but not close themselves. <laughs> It only makes sense that you push the button, it opens, you push again, and it closes. We got wireless charging, that's standard on these. You can change the drive modes. You can go sport, normal, eco. Well, you know I'm going to go sport. Heated seats in the front. Now, higher trims have cooled seats, too, but this isn't the highest trim, so you don't get cooled seats. So, you're going to have a hot fanny. We got it wide, you can really see what's going on there. And the warning works! Look at that! It kept me from smashing into them. Hey, I gotta say, that's impressive. My wife would love that. She said I'm never looking. I hate backing up. I only like going forward. Oh, here we go. What do you notice? It's really smooth. And this is the eCVT. It's a CVT, but it's all electronically controlled. And if anybody knows how to make them, it's Toyota, because they've been making them in Priuses for decades. And I was told something interesting. This is the sunroof, and you can see the sun because I have it on opaque mode, but it doesn't open. Finally, a sunroof that I like because I don't want it to leak. This never opens, it won't leak, it's opaque. Finally, I'm not opening it. It's too hot or too cold outside all the time anyway. And we have it on the energy monitor. So you can see, turn the wheel back, you'll be able to see. You can see what's happening with the brakes. Woo, energy goes to the battery. Look at that, isn't that magical? <laughs> <laughs> but that 39 miles a gallon, that's the average of all driving, which is kind of phenomenal. We're not just talking one is real high and one is real low. It always gets good gas mileage. You take a car that might get 38 on the road, a conventional car, it's probably going to get 22 in a city stop and go. Well, this is regenerating electricity, so it does better. See, we got a sport mode, and there's nobody really coming, so take it to our little drag strip. You will have the engine revving up more because it's a CVT transmission. And that's what they do. Now, now I can see someone's kind of sneaking up on us, so we'll have to do it fast. On your mark, get set, go! Not awe-inspiring, but it takes off decently and smooth. I just like automatic transitions myself because they got a little more kick to them with actual gears. So we're going 50, 46, we're gonna pass somebody. You can see. You're going, it gets to 60 fast enough. It's fine for driving. And unlike some hybrids that ride like go-karts, <laughs> going over stone roads, this thing's got a pretty smooth ride to it. They got a decent suspension system on these things. The biggest gripe that most people have about Toyota Priuses is their ride is quite a bit on the weak side. This thing is a regular vehicle that's been hybridized and it really has a nice ride. And it doesn't have much wind noise either. And I do have to say, I like the nightshade, the black and chrome, and then the white and black with the black rims. It's, it's got a nice look to it. And look, I didn't even notice. I was going 45, I was supposed to be going 20, and I had no problem whatsoever. I didn't even notice anything, so it really handles quite well. And once you get rolling, you can see, it picks up pretty good. When you come to a stop, now we'll turn it off of sport mode. And of course now, the only thing you hear is the fan, because the motor's turned off, and we're running on battery power. So it's really quiet when it's just sitting there. <laughs> so there you have it. They're only hybrid, the Vans is now. I gotta say, had a nice ride. Decent acceleration, all kinds of accoutrements to it. Me, of course, I'm a cheapskate. I'd probably go get a Toyota Corolla Cross because it's like $12,000 cheaper. I'm cheap, right? <laughs> but, you know, if you don't mind going in the 40s and you want a small SUV like this and it fits your need, go road test one. I'm really happy with it. You know, I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> so I won't buy one until it gets really old or a customer gets too tired. They'll just sell it cheap and I'll buy it and drive it for another two, 300,000 miles, right? But if you're looking for a car like this, Hey, it's got a dependable four-cylinder engine. It's not turbocharged, and it's a hybrid. Toyota's hybrid. I've seen the RAV4s. 
Camry hybrids 250, they're still on the original battery, they're still getting great gas mileage. So, and regardless of when you buy it, Toyota gives a 10 year, 150,000 mile warranty on the battery. A lot of people, 150,000 miles to them, oh, I'll get rid of my car. You don't have to worry about the battery. And even if you did buy then, if the battery went bad, there's reconditioned batteries available for a much cheaper. I had a customer in Chicago, drove a Camry hybrid, for Uber and he bought another battery and installed parts and labor. It only cost him 1300 bucks. He had like 250 on his Camry. It finally started to go out, the hybrid battery. So he had a guy install that and it worked perfectly fine. His gas mileage went back up to normal. So they're not that bad if you get a Toyota. Now, if you're thinking about getting BMW or Mercedes or Audi hybrid, well, you better have a lot of money in the bank to pay for repairs as it breaks down. These are known for not breaking down, those aren't. You really gotta pick and choose if you're gonna buy a hybrid. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.